I think maybe the pendulum has swung a bit too far and that uh, uh, the broadcasters, and I suppose this is true of all Jewish people, but let's just stick to the broadcasters, television and radio, uh, they seem to feel to me a little bit that the, as if they must uh, tell everything they know, that they must give this full picture, they must keep any confidences, therefore making the, the Roosevelt system we were talking about unworkable. Uh, and uh, if you know it and you hear it, you're duty-bound to, to give it. You, you mustn't pledge it. You won't say anything about it. And, uh, and, and I've been in a couple of places where I, I kept my mouth shut when I saw what, something was happening that shouldn't have happened. Uh, and um, I hold no, I'm not ashamed of that. It, it wasn't my affair. And I don't think the public is really, and I'm in the public now, I don't think the public is entitled to know every detail of everybody's life. And I think that it was, uh, it was well that, uh, that President Roosevelt's infirmity was not generally appreciated. It was known, it just wasn't appreciated. And the, the great lengths were taken to, uh, to prevent its becoming appreciated. But I think that was justified. What, we, what would we have had? We would have had John Garner as a wartime president. Turner was a nice man, capable man. But would it have been an improvement rather than Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill when we got into that? I, I, I think it was all, I think that uh, you can be too much of feeling that I don't, I mustn't keep anything to myself. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when the president traveled, when President Roosevelt went on a trip on the train, on the baggage car up in the first car, there was a ramp with two railings like this. And the president always traveled in the last car. And we were in between and we got off and we'd watch him get off. And he'd come, come out on the observation platform at the rear in those days, a great place to be in a train ride, incidentally. And the ramp had been fixed to that. And he'd come down, he'd come down on his hands. His, ne his legs trail behind him. We knew that. And uh, the townspeople, who had always were collected, congregated to see him, they didn't know it, mostly. And you'd always hear, ooh, you know, the, of astonishment. Now, uh, I don't know that it ever hurt him in any way, but there were local uh, photographers on hand for the local newspapers. There wasn't any television. But the, uh, the, and so the, uh, the White House press photographers, which means that they were not part of the White House at all. They were assigned to the White House, but they worked for news agencies in the AP and the UP and the INS. Uh, and they uh, went to the local, tele uh, uh, the local still photographers, and they told them the rules. Well, they, the rules are made up. Of the, they had no legal standing, but right. they said, you're not to photograph him when he's underway. Wait till he's in the car. Don't do this. You can't do that. And they, they took it upon themselves, really. They, they promulgated it. And we all thought it was a fair deal. Mm -hmm. We thought, if anybody really said justify that, I think we would have said, you don't uh, take a man's infirmity lightly. You don't make fun of, you don't take advantage of another person's physical shortcomings. Right or wrong, I think that's what we would have answered in that world we lived in. And as I say now, I once in a while I've made a little talk at a, a convention of the, again, I'm back to the AP or some group like that, and, and the young, uh, very, very, very young reporters with stars in their eyes came up to me and, and denounced me, you know. How could you, how could you act like that? How could you be a part of that conspiracy? And it didn't seem like a conspiracy to us. So somebody will have to choose. I don't know who will be the judge of all this.